In some ways, the horror show was chasing the success of the Nightmare on Elm Street series. Wes Craven's shocker definitely is, without question. Mitch Pileggi, best known as Walter Skinner on The X-Files, stars as Horace Pinker, the world's angriest TV repairman slash mass murderer. Elsewhere in town is Peter Berg, the world's worst football man. He suddenly has the ability to solve crimes in his dreams, at least when his family is involved, in one way or another. Maybe. He helps lead his adopted cop dad to Pinker, who is eventually executed for his crimes. But not before he starts praying to his TV god for undefined superpowers, which a pair of lips grants him. Come on! Give it to me! You got it, baby. This should sound familiar by now, but the execution doesn't go according to plan. But then it eventually succeeds. That is until Pinker starts using his TV powers to jump from body to body, and eventually through electricity and into TV shows, which Peter Berg is then somehow also able to do. I should really like Shocker. It's incredibly stupid in a way that just goes for it, and the visuals throughout are pretty nifty. 80s electricity effects will always get a thumbs up from me. The premise just doesn't make any sense though. I mean, none. Peter Berg's newfound powers seem to come to him because of his football injury and because he might be Pinker's son, a theory which is floated but seemingly never actually confirmed. And what the hell is the actual backstory here? How did Pinker acquire these powers? What the hell is this TV god thing? Why do his electrical TV powers let him jump from person to person? I hate to bring up the exact same criticism from the horror show, but you have to have rules, and there are none here. It's just whatever works to help the story along, and again, that's cheating. Whenever something spooky happens, the music is just someone bashing a piano for a few seconds. And there's a similar lack of nuance in any of the performances. Everyone is just yelling all of the time. For Pinker, that's fine, but for everyone else, it's exhausting. There's a very telling interview on the Blu-ray with producer Shep Gordon from Alive Films. Alive Films produced four horror movies, Shocker, They Live, Prince of Darkness, and The People Under the Stairs. Gordon explained his thought process about producing these films, which is basically to hire directors with marketable names and let them do whatever they wanted, without any studio interference. On paper, that sounds great, doesn't it? But I'm not one to think that everything a studio has to say is total garbage. Oh sure, sometimes their notes are completely nonsensical, but sometimes collaboration has its place. And I can't help but to think that some studio execs might have reined in Wes Craven on this one a bit and helped it make a little more sense. As it stands, it doesn't. It's all over the place. Sometimes movies just don't click for a number of hard to define reasons, and sadly Shocker is a prime example. Again, this should be right up my alley, and it really just irritated me. 